Welcome back dear students. Again I am back with part 2 of Chinese civilization and hope part 1 was clear to you. Let's peep into part 2 but before that let us refresh the topics which we have already seen in part 1. So dear children let's refresh the topics which we have already discussed in part 1. In the last session we have seen how China was the cradle of the civilization. Also seen the main characteristics of the civilization which included town planning in which we have seen the layout of the city, houses of the civilization and the great wall of China. Also we have seen the society and its hierarchy. How agriculture was the source of earning for the Chinese civilization and how Chinese knew the art of spinning. Now in part 2 we will see what is art and craft of China which will include pottery and woodwork. Also we will see with which countries Chinese had trade relationship. We will throw light on China's religious beliefs. Does Confucianism have a God? Major contributions of the Chinese to the world. And finally, we will close with the decline of the Chinese civilization. Now, let's explore the chapter in detail. Pottery The Chinese made beautiful pottery from porcelain. They crafted lot of items such as horses, jars, cups, saucers and bowls. These are known as China ware. China ware had a glossy surface and were decorated with pictures and other colorful designs. Woodwork China was rich in timber. So, timber was used to construct buildings. Chinese made cabinets and also crafted beautiful objects of wood inlaid with ivory. Even the palace walls were made of polished wood. Trade China had trade relations with Japan, India, Egypt, Mesopotamia and regions as far as the source of Mediterranean Sea, caravans were used for trade. The main items of Chinese trade consisted of silk, China ware, tea, paper were the main items of export. Trade through the silk route played an important role in the development of modern world. The Chinese sold silk for thousands of years and even the Romans called China the land of silk. What puts this Chinese trade? Besides silk, the Chinese also exported tea, salt, sugar, porcelain and spices. They imported or bought goods like cotton, ivory, wool, gold and silver. Religion like other civilizations, the Chinese also worshipped the forces of nature. Ancestor worship was common. Oracles and astrologers were also treated with respect. They consulted oracles to know their future. It, is, it was believed that the priests were close to gods and acted as mediators between the people and the spirits. The emperor of China was regarded as the son of Sangadi, the god of heaven. Later many people accepted Confucianism, Taoism or Buddhism were widely practiced in China. Confucianism As the civilization progressed, Religion like Confucianism 
Shintoism and Buddhism became important. Confucius was the greatest was the greatest philosopher of China. The religion and philosophy advocated by him is known as Confucianism. The principles he taught were basically practical code of moral conduct. His teaching had a mass appeal and were very popular. His main teachings included emphasis on good behavior. He taught do unto others as you wish others to do unto you. Admission of one's error is a great virtue. <coughs> he taught his people to respect their ancestors. One should be firm in one's belief and emphasized on moral values like honesty, truth, dutifulness. Confucius was a greatest philosopher and attracted large number of disciples and have exerted a great impact on Chinese culture. Confucianism was basically practical code of moral conduct. His teachings are found in the analect of Confucius. Later Confucianism became the state religion of China. Contribution of Chinese Civilization The contribution of Chinese civilization are manifold. The invention of paper and writing ink helped in spreading of knowledge. Wood blocks were first carved out, then their surfaces were inked and pressed on paper. By 9th century CE, Chinese were printing books. Other notable inventions included the manufacture of gunpowder, the mariner's compass, the water mill, the wheelbarrow, umbrella, and kite. Chinese civilization was very advanced civilization. They used both solar and lunar calendars. They could predict eclipses. They developed a system to keep record of weather, frost, blood, etc. Other inventions included Mariner's compass, the paper, gunpowder, writing ink, and kites. Modern clock is based on the principle of the astronomical clock. The Chinese invented seismograph and could record an earthquake. Decline of the Chinese civilization. Like other great civilizations of ancient world, Chinese civilization and culture never faded into oblivion. It is one of the oldest continuous civilizations of the world. The civilization is unique in the sense that it still endures to this very day. So thank you dear children. Here I conclude thing one of history. Thank you for watching. See you soon with the next video. We have completed theme 1, the river valley civilization, in which we have already seen four civilizations. They are the Mesopotamian civilization, the Egyptian civilization, Indus Valley civilization, and the Chinese civilization. In Mesopotamian civilization, we have seen what is civilization, and how Mesopotamia was the cradle of the civilization. In Egyptian civilization, we have already seen how and why it is called as gift of Nile, have gone through the main characteristics of the Egyptian civilization, which included town planning, how towns were planned, different types of building that are dwelling houses and public buildings. Architectural engineering, like pyramids, and temples which has made marks in modern times. The Indus Valley civilization which also belonged to Bronze Age civilization. We have seen the extent of Indus Valley civilization and why it is known as Harappan civilization. What does the word Mohenjo-daro means? Seen the main characteristics of the civilization which included town planning and how cities followed a grid system. 
we are focused into the architecture which included different types of buildings dwelling houses and public buildings in public buildings we have seen the structure and use of great granary and great park in chinese civilization we have seen how they made a transition from bronze age to iron age we have seen their architecture in which we have seen the great wall of china how sericulture started in china different types of pottery and their contribution to the civilization in the next class we will see theme 2 that is your vedic civilization which will include the early vedic civilization and later vedic civilization see you soon with the next video till then bye take care and stay safe